Hey guys, I'm Rambo. I'm a full-time photographer from New Zealand and I really enjoy shooting surf and ocean imagery. I'm a digital imaging ambassador for Sony so I'm fortunate enough to be able to try out a bunch of epic camera gear and I've sort of worked out what's the best gear for me shooting in the ocean and so today I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown on what cameras, lenses and housings that I use. Uh, back in 2015 when I got my first Sony mirrorless camera, I tried to find a housing for it but I found it really difficult and the only one I could find was from this little dive housing company called Mekon out of Hong Kong. So those guys have slowly evolved into sea frogs uh, which are the housings that we see today. So. Yeah, originally I started off making these small diving housings. The one I had was pretty basic, um, didn't have a removable port. You could only really use the kit lens or a couple of short lenses in it. Um, but I got some good photos with that housing. And then I always had the Mekon or Sea Frogs housings as sort of like a second backup housing. I'd have like a surf brand housing uh, that I would use. And then when I went on a trip, I might take one of these housings as a spare housing or sometimes if I was traveling I didn't want to take much so I'll just take one of these housings that are a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. Eventually I had a couple of major issues with the surf brand housing that I was using. Um, I found the usability wasn't really working that well for me. They didn't have things like an on off switch or like buttons would fall off or buttons wouldn't line up and I just found the whole experience to be pretty frustrating and I was actually enjoying using my backup housing more than I was using my main housing. So. Uh, what it came down to was I flooded my housing for my A9 um, and so I was pretty much done with that brand and then I was like I'm just gonna roll with the Sea Frogs ones full time and that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years so uh, I'll give you a little rundown of what I like about these housings. So there's one area on the Sea Frogs housings that I know a few people have had issues with uh, and that is right at the base here uh, we've got four bolts and on those bolts is where you connect your pistol grip. So when you use a pistol grip, let's say you can hold your housing like that, use this little button here as a trigger. So I had heard of a few people having issues where the, they were getting really hairline cracks from the bolts because there was so much pressure going, you know, from the housing just on those four spots. Uh, so what Sephrogs have done is their new housings um, all have this metal plate on the bottom for your pistol grip to attach to. So there you've got 10 screws that bring that metal plate in and then you've still got your four holes where your pistol grip attaches but just the pressure is sort of more evenly distributed. So if you're looking at getting a Sea Frogs housing and you want to shoot with a pistol grip, I definitely recommend getting one that has the metal plate uh, and then you'll have no issues. So this is the A7R3 housing. Uh, I also use the A7 III um, in this housing. Uh, I can't really see what difference there would be. They do make an A7 III housing and an A7R3 but Cameras are essentially the same, the only real difference in the operation is the um, A7R 3 has like a little button you need to push down for the mode dial and the A7 III doesn't but they both seem to work well in this in this one housing. The main thing that I really love about using these Sea Frogs housings is they just have like so many different controls on there so there's always so many buttons and dials and you just have a lot more creative control over your camera. Um, with the major surf brand housings, I found like the controls on them were pretty basic. A lot of them didn't even have like a on off switch, for example. The only controls that it doesn't have are the focus joystick control. Uh, I imagine that's because the focus joystick's so small and niggly, you'd have to have four really, really tightly fitting pins and that would be quite hard to get like a proper seal around each pin. So I don't know if it's impossible, but that's uh, pretty difficult. And then the other thing that it doesn't have is a control for the front wheel. So there's no control there. Uh, the good thing about these Sony cameras is it's easy to customize all the buttons and dials. So for that issue, there's a simple workaround. Instead of having your aperture on the front wheel here, you might just set the aperture to the back wheel here have your shutter speed at the top and you're good to go to shoot manual. I've recently just come up with a really good solution to not having that thick joystick control. So what you do is you set up your custom button. Um, so you go to custom key and I've got custom button four, which is the delete button. I have that set to focus settings. So what that means is now when I hit the focus setting buttons, then I can use the different directions of the back wheel to move the focal point around if I want to. So that pretty much gives you full control over the focal point cursor. Uh, some of the controls that I use a lot when I'm shooting with this housing are uh, the mode dial, so I'll often switch between manual and aperture priority depending on how I'm shooting and how challenging the light is. Uh, I use the exposure compensation dial quite a lot. If I'm shooting in aperture priority, I'll often bring that down and make things a little bit darker so you're 
not losing any of your highlight info. On the back it has, you can get into the menu and then you can move around the menus of these buttons here. So you can basically find like any control you want. Um, Sony cameras have their own customizable menus. So I recommend putting, you know, the controls that you want in those menus. Uh, one thing that I'll put in there is to change from like your regular um, shutter focus. So your shutter button will also be focusing. And sometimes I'll change that to the back button focus if I'm shooting sort of some water details or something that I want really low in the frame or something that I want really close or something that's a little bit difficult. Um, I'll change to a back button focus. So let's lock that focus in and then start shooting away. Another extra safety precaution these housings have is this vacuum pump system. So what you do is you just unscrew, just unscrew that little guy off there and then you have this vacuum pump uh, kit. So this is something you can buy separately and that has a little electronic valve you put on there, push the button to start that guy up. So the light flashes red, then we screw that in. And then we put on the little pump. And so what we're doing, gonna do now is we're gonna pump all the air out of the housing. So that's gonna check to make sure that it's gonna create a vacuum and make sure that it's gonna be airtight, which means it's gonna be watertight. There it is, green. So now that that's gone green, that tells you that your housing's fully watertight. So there's a full vacuum in there. So if you want to, you could try out like all the buttons and make sure that no, no buttons were gonna let any water in at all. Um, everything here seems to be fine. It's kind of crazy if you try and open this right now, you actually won't be able to open it because it's such a strong vacuum. No, can't open it. So then all you do is you just push that little button there Let's the air out, then you just put that little cap back on, and then you know you're good to go. Peace of mind, your housing's not gonna leak. Another cool feature I like on the Sea Frogs housings is they have the zoom control wheel here. So, what that does is you've got different zoom colors um, that you can put in your lenses. So, this one is for the 12 to 24, uh, which is here. So, you just slide that on like that, then you can see control the zoom of the lens. So, it means the lens is in there for the body. Pop that in, it has this little lock on the front so you turn that around and then it locks the inside and then you can see as you rotate the wheel it's going to rotate the uh, zoom on the lens so it's pretty epic you get to use the full focal range on your lenses in the water so something i really like about these housings as well is they're positively buoyant so that means if you're out swimming uh, then the housing is going to float uh, i've had other housings in the past that were negatively buoyant so if you're out in pretty big surf sometimes you can get super worked your housing gets ripped out of your hands your leash can come off and then if your housing's buoyant, it's gonna be floating around on the surface, probably waves are gonna push it in, it might end up on the beach. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to find it. Uh, if a housing is negatively buoyant, it's basically just gonna sink. Your only chance is to come back on a flat day with a snorkel and mask and hope for the best, but pretty much your housing and your camera's lost. So yeah, it's nice that it floats. Uh, so these housings have a removable port system, uh, which is cool because it means you can use different lenses with different um, different ports. So the system's nice and easy. It has like a little lock like your camera would. And then what you do, hold that down and then you twist the port. Uh, one thing to note is this has a little off on diagram on the port that's actually the wrong way around. So when you want to twist it off, you actually got to move it in the on direction. I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's just the way it is. And then it just will pop off there. So you can see that little latch here. That's what clips in with the little extra safety clip there. Yeah, so you can pop a dome port on there, twist that guy in and lock in so you know you're good to go. It also actually has an extra little safety feature on the inside. It has a little screw and a little um, that can go in here. So that way, even if you wanted to unlatch it here, you couldn't, but I sort of find that's a little bit overkill for me. So I'm happy with how the strength of this lock system, so I just leave that one off. Yeah, so the reason you have different ports is so you can use different lenses. So you've got, you've got a longer lens, you will use a longer port. Uh, you've got a shorter lens, you will use a shorter port. So this is the one I use with the 90mm macro. This is the one I use with the 55mm 1.8, or if you had like 85 1.8, it might be a nice uh, port to use that with. And then you've got your dome lenses. So the domes, uh, so you can shoot wider. Obviously, if you had like a fisheye lens in here, all you would see would be the edge of the port. So the dome basically has got like a better field of view, better perspective, it goes out the side. And then they've got a couple of domes here, six inch dome and an eight inch dome. 
The reason you'd use a bigger dome over a smaller dome is if you're doing half and half photos and you wanted to have a nice split where you could see like under the water and above the water, the bigger the dome, like the thinner the split line you're gonna get and the cleaner split. So uh, big domes are better for that. Big domes are a little bit more like clumsy if you're swimming in the surf, um, you know, it's gonna get caught in the water a little bit. So if I was just sort of solely shooting in the surf, I'd probably use a smaller dome. I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown on each housing that I have here and uh, what camera and lens I like to use in that housing. So this is the A7R3 housing. So this is actually the older housing, the A7R3 housing without the extra metal reinforcing, but I'm not using it with the pistol grip. I just use it like I would a normal camera, hold it up hold the lens and shoot. So uh, for that, I don't need a pistol grip, so there's gonna be no issues there. I'm not really, don't really have any concerns. Uh, so my go-to setup for this uh, A7R3 housing uh, is either the A7R3 or the A7 III, either or. Um, and I use the 90mm macro. 90mm is around the nice sweet spot of focal length that I like to shoot in the water, just the different, slightly different perspective it gives on the waves, like a little bit extra compression. Uh, but then the bonus of using the macro lens is if you want to shoot little details, um, you know, like sun reflections, water ripples or whatever, you can shoot super up close. So that's a really nice lens. It's, uh, it's one I quite like to take out for sunrise. Um, just, yeah, because at sunrise, you know, there's so many interesting details or you can blow the sun like way out of focus, make it super big. And then other lenses I will shoot with uh, the A7R3 housing is I would shoot with this 12 to 24. So uh, if I'm going to use this, I would generally use it at 12 mil. If I'm gonna shoot wide, then I'm gonna shoot really wide. So uh, for that, you'd wanna use one of these dome ports. So you can see if you're shooting really wide, uh, you're gonna get like everything. You're almost seeing sort of 180. That's kind of why you have to have the dome so you can sort of see in every direction. So yeah, that's something I'd use for split shots. This is also a great lens for shooting underwater because when you're underwater, what happens is the closer you are to your subject, the less water there is between you and your subject, so the better the clarity is gonna be. So the wider you're shooting, the closer you need to be to your subject. So if I was using this at 12 mil, um, you know, and I had someone swimming past underwater, then it might look nice and clear. If I was shooting at 24 mil, you're just gonna lose that little bit of extra visibility uh, through having to shoot through twice as much water. Uh, the other lens I quite like shooting with the A7 III or the A7R three is the 55 mil, which we've got here on the A6500. Uh, so that's, yeah, 55 mil 1.8, so it gives a nice sort of dreamy look to it, shooting at low aperture. Uh, that's kind of a fun, fun lens to shoot. One lens I'd love to get in the water would be this 85 mil 1.4 G Master. That low aperture will fall off and look amazing, but unfortunately, it's a 77 mil filter, and when you try and put it into the port, it just gets caught halfway onto the inside of this little lip here. So at the moment, you um, can't really use anything that's a 77 mil or above in any of the flat ports. But if you look on the Seafrog's website, they have a full rundown of what um, port will work with which lenses. So um, you just kind of want to check the compatibility there. Definitely my favorite combo to shoot with in the water is the A7R 3 and the 7200 F4. Uh, it's just an amazingly versatile combo. Um, I mainly will shoot it from 150 to around 200, the longer end of the focal length. Uh, I just find that that isolates out your subject nicely so you just can concentrate on the wave without like a lot of other distracting elements in the frame. Uh, sea frogs don't actually currently make a port for this so I had to crudely construct my own. Uh, I actually couldn't believe that everything sort of came together. I randomly had this extension port so what we've got here is the 90 macro port, extension port. So I just jammed those two guys together so that made it long enough to fit the 7200. I actually have the 7200 2.8 which would look pretty insane in the water but uh, again it's that 77 mil um, diameter so that's not gonna fit. Another thing is, is this is twice as heavy as the F4 so F4 is good enough and it's a little bit easy to use. I'm um, generally shooting like higher apertures most of the time with that anyway, so it's not a big deal. So this is actually a manual focus control for the 90 more macro, which comes with the 90 more port. But what I found was it lines up perfectly with the zoom on the um, 7200. So when I put that collar on the lens, jam it in the housing, and then this little control here, I can uh, perfectly use the full focal range of the 7200, so it's insane. That's a, it was a crude fix, but I can't believe it worked. But I've actually heard from Seafrogs that they're gonna make a port specifically for the 7200, so 
don't bother knocking together one of these little Frankenstein models like I have. Uh, maybe just wait till that comes out. It should be out. Uh, they were saying April, but that's before all this uh, pandemic stuff went down. So maybe April, May, June, who knows, but shouldn't be too far away. And I'm looking forward to trying that out. Uh, so this is the Salted Line A6000 series from Seafrog. So they call it the A6XXX series because basically anything above the A6000 will fit in here except for the A6600. So the difference with the A6600 is it has the new Z battery, which is the bigger batteries like the A7 III, the A7R III, etc. use. Um, whereas the, all the other A6000 series cameras use the smaller battery. So because it has a bigger battery, it's like thicker on the grip. Um, so it won't fit in here, unfortunately. But yeah, anything else from the A6000 series is gonna fit, which is cool. Like it's one universal housing. You could start off on an A6000 and end up in an A6500 or something. So use this housing with the A6500. Uh, the favorite lens to use with that is definitely the 55mm 1.8. Super crazy sharp, that lens, nice and small. Also, it gives an equivalent like on a full frame of around about 85mm, so a really nice focal length for shooting in the water, I think. Uh, so I've got a fisheye for the A6500. Uh, which is a Samyang 8mm um, 2.8. So this Samyang is a manual focus lens only, uh, but that's fine because that's how I prefer to shoot fisheye anyway. So what I do would be I put it on around f8, put the um, focal distance on around 0.45 of a meter, um, and then anything kind of from around 20 centimeters and tall, infinity is going to be in focus. So the um, great thing about that is when you're shooting fisheye, you're often just be holding the camera up like that you don't really need to be you know make sure you've got your focal point on your subject everything's going to be in focus so you just have that freedom to be able to just hold it up with a pistol grip and fire away yeah these lenses are pretty cheap uh great image quality so real good way to get uh some you know wide in the barrel looking out of the barrel sort of shots in the water with the a6000 series uh sea frogs actually make a little um manual focus uh control for that as well so if you did want to change the focus you can but like I say, I just pretty much just set it up, leave it, good to go. Uh, so with the fisheye, I use the dome port. So I just have this little dome for this one, uh, which is a four inch, it's pretty cute. Uh, one thing to note is that the A6000 series and the A7 series, the port sizes are, are different. So uh, <clears throat> you can see the opening on the A6000 series is a lot smaller than the opening on the A7 series. So you can actually fit that port inside the other port. So what that means unfortunately is you can't use these dome ports on this housing. You need to buy specific ports for whatever housing you have. So apart from that, the A6000 Salted Line series is pretty similar to the A7 series. Um, cool thing about this is you actually have all the controls. Uh, there's no front dial at all on um, A6500. So you're not missing that there and then these don't have a focal point joystick so you're not missing that there so you can actually every single function of this camera you can use it which is amazing it also has zoom control so again you can get like zoom collars um, to go on any lenses to use with this housing as well um, it has that same vacuum pump system so you can check to make sure everything's going to be airtight before you go in uh, yeah everything's pretty much the same so again this a6xxx series um, from sea frogs has that new metal plate for the um, pistol grip to attach to. So that's gonna be super strong right there. You're not gonna have any issues. So the other housing I've got here is the RX100 series salted line. So my favorite travel cam is the RX100 Mark VI. And it's so epic. It's this tiny little point and shoot size thing, but it's got a one inch sensor. So it has, still has decent image quality. And then the best bit about it is the lens goes from 24 mil equivalent on the wide end and you can go all the way to 200, which is just wild to be able to fit something that has that epic focal range and versatility in your pocket. It's just insane. Uh, so yeah, when I'm traveling sort of personal stuff or just kind of cruising around when I'm on, uh, don't have anything particular I need to shoot, I'll just chuck this in my pocket and it'll be my go-to. So it's nice to have a housing that can also fit this guy. Um, and then shooting between, having the versatility when you're in the water to shoot between 24 mil up to 200 mil is, is pretty wild. So yeah, the housing is same build quality as all the other ones. So this one uses the same port system as the A6000 series. So this little four inch dome we can put on there too. If we want to do a split shot, that's probably going to give us a little bit, a little bit of a nicer split than the flat port. Um, but with this flat port here, you can still use the full focal length from 24 all the way up to 200. Has that same uh, vacuum pump system, so you can check to make sure everything is airtight, which is epic. Has that same 
metal plate there for the pistol grip, so that's unreal. Uh, another cool feature is the zoom controls up the top here and it's so smooth because it just runs this little lever rather than physically turning the wheel it's just pushing that little lever over which kind of like mechanically pushes it out so yeah the zoom on it feels unreal another feature that i love on this uh on the rx series is it has a pop-up um viewfinder uh so i don't really a big fan of shooting through the screen so i prefer to shoot through the viewfinder so that's amazing if you want that it's there uh, and then the cool thing on the housing is you can use the screen or also you can use the viewfinder there so housing has to be a little bit bigger because obviously the, ha the viewfinder pops up right up to this height here. One thing to keep in mind is if you're shooting a lot uh, around the ocean or in the water that it is a possibility your camera might get wet. It doesn't really matter what housing brand you're using often it comes down to user error or Sometimes it might be a housing malfunction or sometimes it might just be bad luck. So I really wouldn't advise taking on water photography unless you're prepared for the worst. So maybe you just use like an old camera or a second camera or like a cheaper camera. Personally, I'd recommend having your camera gear covered by insurance anyway, uh, but make sure your policy is gonna cover you for your camera when using it in a housing. When it comes to camera equipment, I'd never tell someone this was like the best camera or this is the housing you should buy. I just like to share my own experiences and then let you know what I like about things, what I don't like about things, and then you can take all of that on board and then make up your own decision what's gonna work best for you. So all these housings have a leak sensor and I rambled on about it for ages, but I accidentally forgot to push record for that bit. So it's not the main video, but basically what it comes down to, the little sensor here, any moisture gets in, sets off this alarm, red light goes, so you know it's time to get out. Pretty cool feature. So I've got a Sea Frogs discount code, so if you want to save a few bucks, check that out, it'll be in the description. So I put a shout out on my Instagram just asking to see if anyone had any questions about housings or ocean photography or gear in general, and got a bunch of those, but this first part of the video took me so long that I think I'm just gonna kick back with the beer for a little bit and we'll maybe do that as a separate video. So if you wanna watch that, you can even click up here somewhere and uh, there'll be a video of that. Uh, if you've got any questions about uh, any of the stuff we talked about today, housings or camera gear for the shooting ocean photography, um, just hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I think I'm doing a bunch more YouTube clips, so I'll do some more ocean photography, some camera gear, some gadgets and tricks and tips, and also some van life stuff and a little bit of travel photography. So if that sounds like something you might be into, you might want to consider subscribing. Please subscribe, I only have one subscriber. See you next time.